Hello Chef, that's my name, what is up guys, and today we're going to be counting down 7 things you should not do in Dream League Soccer 2020. So I'm making this video similar to what I made last year on uh, what things you shouldn't do in Dream League Soccer 2019, but the game has updated since then, and I think this video needs an update. The game has definitely changed since then, they've added some new features and everything, so these are 7 brand new tips or things you should not be doing in Dream League Soccer 2020. So since this game has been out since January, I've been I've experimented with it and I've been playing with it and I think I've concluded that I am like I'm pr I'm pretty knowledgeable of this game so I can make this video now. And since my video of uh, five things you shouldn't do in Dream League Soccer 2019 did so well and a lot of people benefited from it, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing it again. But as they say, the second one is always worse. But here I am. So before we get into it, like all of the top 10 videos out there, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing something really special when we hit 50k and we're almost there guys. So help me out, hit help me hit 50k, subscribe to the channel. But let's get into number seven. I stepped it up this year. I added two more tips. It may or may not be kind of a stretch. So starting off with number seven, we're gonna start off with a little bit easy. You should not buy agents that are under legendary. Okay? You should. You just. Sh and honestly, if like coming from my point of view, you probably shouldn't just buy agents like ever. So agents cost lots of gems, and they and gems are really hard to come by in this game. And you know the reward for the amount of gems that you spend on agents just isn't good enough for just the amount of grinding you have to do. Legendary agents usually give you like players that are like 80 overall and just you know you just don't need them uh, unless you're actually starting the game. But chances are if you have 300 gems you probably have a decent enough team before you can actually afford you know a, a legendary agent because you've been grinding the game for a while. But even if you are going to buy legendary agents, you should definitely not buy rare or common agents. Common agents cost 30 gems and rare agents cost 150. You probably never want to buy any agent that is common because you want to upgrade your team. Buying a common agent will not upgrade your team. Your team is already common to start off with. So even if you spend, even if it say it's cheap for 30 gems, you still don't want to buy a common player because that's not upgrading your team whatsoever. You will upgrade your team if you buy a rare agent, but that's 150 gems, which is, is hard to come by. And before you get 150 gems, most likely a rare player will show up in the transfers. If you have a full common team, I believe once in a while a rare player will show up. So you can buy the rare player there with the coins that you have. And coins are really easy to come by because you can always watch those video ads. So honestly, save your gems. Don't buy uh, those uh, rare and common agents. That's something you should not do. So coming in at number six, this one's kind of controversial, but I would just advise you if you want to progress really fast in this game, then you shouldn't play online before like I'd say Saturday or Sunday. So as you should know, you can get gems from the uh, like your position on the leaderboard. So how the leaderboard works is you play two online matches, then the game will place you into a, a leaderboard with other players who just finished the online two matches like the same time as you. So if you want to get the most value with the least grinding in the game, I suggest you don't play online until Saturday or Sunday. Since you'll be starting at the same level as people who started playing on Saturday and Sunday, you can just grind those two days online and, and easily get number one and get those 100 gems. As if you were to start playing online, say, Monday, then you'd have to grind the whole entire week try to get try to get number one, which, you know, is, is really hard and, like, so much longer than you need it to be if you want to get those 100 gems. But if you're just a casual Dream League soccer player and you love playing online, I'm not going to stop you. So coming at number five is do not spend gems on cosmetics. So that includes, like, emotes in online and then the, the custom kits and the custom logo. Gems are really hard to come by. 
you have to either grind online, which is hard because you're playing against another person, or you can uh, you grind the objectives, but that doesn't pay out that much. You can also grind career mode, which is easier, but it's also really long. So gems are really valuable and they're really hard to get. So if you want to progress further in the game, you probably shouldn't spend them on stuff that doesn't do anything, like cosmetics. So you really don't need any emotes you, like for online to, to help you win, okay? And you obviously don't need like custom kits or custom logos. I suggest you just buy them when you've maxed out all your facilities and you have a really good team, which I'm planning to do. But if you really want that Barcelona kit, and you really don't care about progressing, I mean, go for it, I guess. Alright, so coming in at number four, uh, this was another gems one. Yes, I am very specific on what you should do with gems. This is mostly gems based, but anyway, you shouldn't spend your gems on coaches. So coins are a lot easier to get than gems, okay? You have the ads, all right, and the bit, and you have big bonuses as well as events like give you lots of coins, okay? So coins are automatically uh, easier to get than gems. So with my facility discount, which is like tier three, I think the legendary coaches are like around like 200 gems, all right, which is still a lot. But with coins, you can get the exact same coach for 1,000. 365 coins which is like like bear, like not even that much if you if you watch a lot of ads and stuff and it's obviously cheaper than 200 gems and I'm pretty sure it's even more if you don't have the discount so basically if you see someone in the transfers who is a uh, 80 overall defender that is the cheapest legendary coach that you can get all you have to do is just buy them then release them and then you get to choose whether the fitness or technical coach and then use them as coaches Coaches are very valuable, okay? They're very good, and they really help you progress in the game. Just don't spend gems on them. Buy them with coins. So coming in at number three is just to not skip on those objectives. Again, this is very gems-based. I should probably title this video, How to Spend Your Gems. But you know what? I'm not. I gotta keep the same title as last year. You know, because I want attention. So gems are very valuable and there's not a lot of ways to obtain them and one of the big ways to obtain gems is to, is to do objectives. So at the beginning of each division you should look at the objectives and uh, and you know you might you might think okay I'm just gonna play through it and I'll automatically get the objectives because a lot of them are just winning a lot of games. But some of them are like scoring goals or assists with like a certain amount of players. So if you switch your team around a lot you might not be able to get you know 15 assists with one of your players. So what you have to do is you have to focus on uh, doing that and, you know, get them done early so you can guarantee getting those 10 gems. So don't skip on objectives, okay? Don't think you'll be able to do them, alright? You should, you should always check and, and make sure you do them all. Okay, number two is not a gems related thing. Sorta, I guess. But number two is, you know, honestly, it, buying stuff in the game is probably not the worst thing to do. So last year, I said don't buy coins because you could easily watch video ads and get like and get the same amount of, of stuff for free. But this year, uh, the, you know, coins are used for a lot more this year, and there's gems which you can't even watch video ads for. So honestly, I'm saying go ahead and buy stuff if you really wanted to. But if you are going to buy uh, like stuff in the game, don't buy the stuff for regular price, okay? They'll actively have promos, and after you finish a career, um, a career mode division, they will give you a promo pack. So I believe I, I suggest if you're gonna buy them, wait till you get a promo pack so you can get a cheaper option. They also added these sort of packs, bundles type thing, which I believe I don't know if they're cheaper or not, but I, you can take a look at them um, and you know ass assess them for yourself. So yeah. Just wait for the promo packs. That's my that's my uh, suggestions. So don't buy stuff at regular price. All right, looks like you made it to the final tip slash suggestion of this video. Congratulations! Have you made it so far? Have you done anything on this list? If you haven't, leave that in the comments and let me know if you passed. Okay, and don't lie to me. And if you have done something like this. Either you really don't care about progression, progression and you just want to play the game, which is, uh, which is totally fine. Or I'm stupid and you have a better argument for me. And if you do, leave that in the comments as, as well. I'll try to reply. Anyway, number one, this whole video I've been telling you not to spend gems on something. So, what do you spend gems on? 
I suggest you spend gems on facilities. So the number one thing that you should not do in Dream League Soccer 2020 is to hesitate to upgrade facilities. You can upgrade accommodation so you can buy more players and fit more players in your team so you don't have to sell a bunch of people when you need to make room. There's also the commercial facility where you can earn, where you can upgrade it to earn more coins, which will get you more coaches, which will, you know, get you a better team as well. There's also the medical one, which is, I don't know, it's probably the least useful. And then obviously you have the training facility, which uh, allows you to get, uh, to pick two formations each time you uh, upgrade it. So I suggest obviously 433 and probably one of the ones with three in the back. So upgrading facilities is definitely the way to upgrade uh, to use your gems because I feel like everything else you can do with coins and coins are easier to count uh, to come by. Facilities it's impossible to use coins on to upgrade them so you should definitely use gems on them. But I might be wrong and if I am leave that in the comments down below and I would love to hear what you like to say. So have you done anything on this list? If you have leave it in the comments and I might forgive you. <laughs> I'm joking. So if you pass the test, leave a like. If you didn't pass the test, leave a like on the video. Why not? Also, subscribe to the channel. All right, that's it for me today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got something useful out of it. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. Um, you know, you passed the test. At least you knew you passed the test. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.